in the UK. His name is Paul Brox, wrote an incredible book called Into the Silent Land. And he said an interesting thing to me. We are all just a car crash or a slip away from being a different person. That's right. And that's precisely how I felt the, the very first time I went into one of these uh, neurological rehabilitation centers. I suddenly felt very fragile. That in an instant we can be completely transformed. And of course it's not just the, the person who's affected, the person who's injured who's affected, it's also the, the people around them. And there's an interesting little anecdote of this, is I was with someone who'd had a severe head injury, and I went to see him at home, I did some, did some work with him at home, and he got very angry at one point, got, got very tired of doing my tests, and threw all the test materials on, on the floor. And his wife came in, and eventually he, he calmed down, and I just said to her later on, how, how do you cope with this when that happens? And she said, well, she said something that really interested me. That, and she said, well, when it happens, I think it's not really him. It's not really Jeff. Wow. It's not really him. But paradoxically, what, what kept her with him and kept her supporting him was the, the, was the belief that at some level it really was him. So I think we, we kind of, people in that situation have this kind of, paradoxical survival strategy that well yes they have to accept that it's not the person it's not really them but on another level why are they still with them is there something in that belief though that it, that could possibly be true i mean is there something that doesn't change i don't know i mean some people might call it a soul right do you believe in something like that or, or is everything purely as fragile as you say um i personally don't believe in in an immaterial soul and I think in a case like his, let's call him Jeff, you'd have to ask, well, what's happened to Jeff's soul? What's happened to Jeff's soul in this situation? Has the soul also been mutilated along with the brain? Um, I, th I think I would suggest that this, the notion that there is a sort of immaterial soul, which, as some people might believe, departs the body at death, and, and, and some people might believe takes on another body in a future life. That's an illusion, I think. Other people take a different line on this, and other people do believe there is self-stuff or soul-stuff somewhere. But I, the question is, I would put that, well, where, where is it? In the brain? Uh, I mean, is it possible we just haven't dug deep enough and found it? But what, what, how would you know when you found it? What would you be looking for? I don't no, know. Um, I have no. I, I have no idea what you'd expect to look, for, what you'd expect to find, and and what is it you would expect to see? How how would you ever know when you saw a soul? But what makes you, Paul Brox, you, your personality? What makes you consistent from one day to the next? Well, I, I mean, look what makes your personality? Yeah. Well, I, I, what makes me consistent is that I, I I look. I have the same body more or less from day to day. Um, uh, I look in the mirror, and it's me usually. Well, in fact, it's always me, so it's <laughs> never anybody else. <laughs> but essentially what I tell you, and if you have to ask me about myself, is I tell you a story. If I'm understanding you correctly, ourselves are simply a narrative, a sort of narrative center? The extended self, which is what we normally think of when we think about ourselves, is really a story. It's, it's the story of what's happened to that body over time. Paul Brox is a neuropsychologist and author of the book Into the Silent Land.